Hi, it's Money with Dan here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to automatically categorize your expenses in Microsoft Excel. In this export, the description column contains lots of useful information that we can use to organize our data into categories. But first, we need to clean this data up a little bit before we can make it useful. In this Excel file, I've called it Expense Tracker, and I've changed the tab name to be Data, which is where we're going to paste our data exported from our bank statements. To add a category name to each expense line, we're going to use some common Microsoft Excel formulas to the right-hand side of the data extracted so we can clean up and remove things that are not useful. The first formula that we're going to use is called the left formula. In the column next to your banking data, click on the top row and click the equal button, then typed left l-e-f-t and then open bracket now we're going to click on the description column of the data as that contains a lot of useful information about what the transaction is for thanks to our bank's electronic exchange system and merchant network most transaction descriptions that we use today are often repeated every time we make that same type of transaction at that same store such as purchases for groceries retail shopping subscriptions rent and so on so the first 20 or so characters in the description field will be a constant. We only want to capture up to the first, say, 15 to 20 characters from the description, as that will typically stay constant while the rest may change to include a date or some digits that will vary for each transaction row. We don't want any variables, we just want constants. And I'll show you why in just a moment. Sometimes you might even need 25 characters to get just enough information that will be unique to identify that expense every time it appears on the description column. So in the left formula, I want to bring across 20 characters to start with. So I'll add a comma and then type 20 and then enter close brackets. Now you will see that the formula brings across to this cell the first 20 characters from the description cell. As you can see, it didn't bring across the word rent as that went over 20 characters in length. Since I do want to bring across the word rent in this scenario, I'm going to add an extra five characters to the left formula here. So now it will definitely be unique and the description will repeat every time this transaction appears in my statements. Now I'm going to copy this formula down to all rows by clicking the left mouse button on the right hand corner of the first cell. And I'm going to hold that button down and drag it all the way to the bottom row that has data in it. This will copy the formula down and will also update the formula in each row at the same time accordingly. So each new row has that same left formula updated to look at the description in each row, a handy feature of Microsoft Excel. The next step is to create a new tab in this same file, which I'll call Reference. I will create a new tab by pressing this button here at the bottom right of the screen and then right clicking on the tab and change the tab name to Reference. I now need to copy all the unique references I just created using the left formula and then paste it over to the Reference tab. So I will select all of the data in the left column like this and press Copy. Now I'm going to go to the Reference tab and in cell A1 I will click on the right button of the mouse and I will press Paste Special Values Only so that all these unique identifiers values are pasted and not the left formula. Now be careful about which Paste button option you press. If you select the Paste All button instead, you'll actually paste the left formula instead of the unique identifier value, which means you'll probably get an error in the cell as the formula is copied instead of just the value. We just want the hard-coded value only for this step, so it is constant. Now in column B, row 1 in the Reference tab, I'll give this column a heading called Category. This is where we're going to add the category names that we're going to reuse every month. This will become a reference list, hence the name of the tab, that will keep adding the new expense types if any ever occur. Okay, I'm going to add some category names in column B next to each unique identifier in the reference tab. I prefer to keep my category names to between 5 and 10 types to keep a balance of enough information, but not too much, to make it easier to review a summary of my spending habits for a given period of time. I'm going to work my way down through the list and manually type in a category name for each unique identifier. This will take a little time, so I'll speed this up for the video. If you're liking this video, please hit the like button below in YouTube to help share it to more people. And also press the subscribe button if you want to see more videos from me. It's free. Okay, that took about five minutes to do in real time to get started, which is pretty good considering most of these expenses I won't need to add a new category name ever again. It should take even less time in future as I add more data. 
Now that we've got the category set up for our unique identifiers, we're going to create a formula called the VLOOKUP. With this VLOOKUP, we're going to use it to automatically apply the category names in this column for each row of data. The VLOOKUP works by matching the unique identifier we created in the reference tab to the value in the column with the left formula next to it just here. Click on the top cell in the column next to the column with the left formula and press the equal button and type V look up in one word and open bracket. Now click on the cell with the left formula on the same row, then press the comma button. Then we need to go to the reference tab and select all of column A and B like this so that all data in the field is selected and then press the comma button. Then we'll enter number two for column two, then press the comma button again and type false, F-A-L-S-E for an exact match. Then type close bracket and press enter. Now you can see the formulas work straight away and it's matched the first transaction with category name of rent, which is correct. Now to do this for all rows, you need to click on the left mouth button on the right hand side of column F, row two of this completed formula, and we'll drag it down to the last row with data to copy the VLOOKUP formula, which will automatically update the formula for each row. Now that we've matched every single item with a category name, we should not have any errors as every row does have a unique identifier in the list now. If you do have an error, it is likely because the left formula was not copied across correctly and you'll need to go back to that step and check. Now with each new month or data from another bank account that you want to add to this list, you can simply repeat the above process again and add the new data underneath the previous data you've just pasted in and then just copy the two formulas down to the last row of data again. Also, remember to add any new expenses that you incur in the new data to the reference tab, which you'll see if you have an error in the VLOOKUP column. Now, you might also be thinking, what is the best way to organize this data with category names added to it to review and compare by each category? The best option in Microsoft Excel to do this, in my opinion, is using a pivot table. Pivot tables are simple to use and you can adapt and organize your data in many different ways quickly. A pivot table is critical for slicing and dicing data. I have created a video on how to add a pivot table to your banking data with your categories, which should be appearing on your screen right now. Also, I'm now showing the link mentioned earlier on how to open your bank statements in Excel too, just in case you missed that step. Thanks for watching and see you next time.